Because we've been changing topics, I want to get us back into where we were at the start of last week. We introduced a whole new topic and it had a big, scary, intimidating name. But it wasn't that big a deal once we unpacked it. What was that big, scary, intimidating name? Give me the first word, Tanuki. Discrete, before we move on. What does that mean? Discrete as opposed to, what's the other thing, which starts with a C? Continuous, good. So continuous is an easier word to understand. It's like, oh, it goes all the way through. This thing that we're, these numbers that we're looking at can take on any value. Discrete means they can't just take on any value. What, is, what does it mean instead? Think with me. I need your, I need your effort and your remembering. Go ahead. Um, there are only specific set values that it can be. Fantastic. I think that's, that's basically the perfect textbook definition. There are only specific values it can take on. A good example that I have in the top of my head is um, shoe size. Shoe size, right? You can have size eight, size eight and a half, size nine, etc. Um, you can have numbers that aren't whole, but they're only particular ones. You don't have, say, size 8.2, etc. right? Okay, that's the discrete part. What's the R stand for? Someone else? Yeah, go ahead. Random. Random. Random as opposed to deterministic, which is another big long word. What, is, what does random mean in this very specific technical context? Yeah, go ahead. You can't predict it. I think that'll do, yeah. There's sort of um, chaotic, unpredictable elements that are in it. It's not going to be the same thing every time, which is what deterministic means, right? Um, I think that'll do for now. And then lastly, V stands for variable. So we're looking at numbers that change, obviously. Okay, fantastic. Now the key object that we've been studying underneath discrete random variables is it, we usually put it out in a table. It has to do with, okay, there's all of these different things, right? Different values that it can take on. And we say, well, how do we understand the, the chances and how they're, they're laid out? Does anyone remember what this table is usually called? Yeah. Fantastic. A probability distribution. Now, like I said, we tend to put this out in a table, but in the, um, in the weeks and months to come, you're going to learn that we can actually use like function notation to describe a probability distribution. Sometimes, say for example, we're going to talk about rolling dice today because it's a really good situation of discrete random variables. When you roll a die, when it's fair, every number has the same chance, right? Every value has the same probability. What do we call that when they're all the same? Yeah, go ahead. Uniform. Uniform, good. Uniform probability distributions are really important because they happen so often, okay? Now the most recent thing we learned under this heading was something to do with trying to say, okay, when you're doing something like say a $10 bet or you're going out and buying insurance or not buying insurance, right? We want to work out what's most likely to happen? Are you most likely to gain money, lose money? Are you more likely to get these marks, those marks? What do we call that when you're trying to anticipate, if you do this over and over again, what the result will be? Do you remember what we called this? Someone who hasn't said anything yet. Yeah, go ahead. Expected value. Fantastic. Expected value. And thankfully, unlike these really fancy technical names like this, right, this is exactly what it sounds like. It's the value you ought to expect after doing this repeatedly. Okay? Now, we introduced some notation. We had to use some Greek letters actually because we didn't have enough of our own letters to denote expected value. Do the easy one first. E for expected means we put in a big capital E. What do we put after that? What do we tend to do with that? Yeah, an X in brackets, right? So this is a bit like function notation, right? The expected value of X, if the variable was called something else, we'd call it the expected value of T or expected value of U or the expected value of anything, actually, and that will become important later on. Uh, how else did we denote it? We used a, a, okay, good, we'll go with this one first. So this uh, capital sigma, by the way, because just like English, uh, Greek has capitals and it has lower case. Uh, this sigma means we're going to add up a bunch of things. What's the things we add up to get expected value? Say again, sorry. Does it, anyone want to help out? There's a bunch of things we add up over and over again that give us the expected value. I'll give you a clue. Just like this, it has an x in it, but it's not the same x. You remember? Huh. This bit's a bit trickier. Okay, look, think about, think for a minute. I want you to think. I know you have it in your notes, right? In order to get this, 
Number one, we've got to look at the, um, the variables, the different possibilities, but you don't just add those up. You don't go like on a die, one plus two plus three plus four plus five plus six, that'd give you some huge number, right? We're dividing by something as well. What are we dividing by? Suppose in this context it's, probably, it's multiplying, but everything's a fraction, so that's why I think about it as dividing. Hmm. Like some things are more likely than others, right? Tuniki, what would you put in here? X, which is the variables, right? And then we're multiplying by every probability. I said dividing because in this context, right, we're dividing by six every time if we're thinking about a fair die. All right, so this is how you calculate it. There's one more way that we denote this. I usually don't like equal signs along a row, but these are all the same thing. There's another Greek letter that we used. Does anyone remember? It's a really uncommon one. Yeah, it's mu, which looks like a, a U with a tail out the front. Uh, it's mu because this is a mean, basically. It's a weighted mean based on how likely all the things are. OK, now, put a line under that. And in your spreadsheet, what I want us to think about is fiddling with this idea of expected value. I want to understand its usefulness and also some of its weaknesses, which are going to be why we introduce a new idea today. OK, so we talked about the fact that a probability distribution is normally, I can't raise this chair. I remember trying this last time. It's normally represented in a table, right? So we're going to use the cells of this spreadsheet to represent a probability distribution. What's the, um, what's the top row of a probability distribution usually? It's usually x. These are the different values that we can take on. I'm going to make this, because I'm finicky like that, I'll make this a bit bigger. Hopefully you guys can read that. Maybe not quite so big. That'll do. OK. Now, in the case of a fair die, what are the options that we've got? There are six of them. One, two, three, four, five, six. So go ahead, pop them in. Now, the next row, we've actually got it just here, right? It's not the values, it's the probability of those values, right? So if I write P of X here, I know that sometimes we ask you to write P of X equals X, a capital and a lowercase. But for now, and for reasons that become clear later on, let's just write it with the lowercase. It'll be a bit more succinct. OK. now. For each of these, because it's a fair die, six options, it's a uniform probability distribution, right? Um, we would want each of these to be a sixth. Now, if it were something nice like a half, right? Because we're writing in decimals in a spreadsheet like this, you could have written 0 0.5. That would have been a half, right? But you can't do that for a sixth. Why not? Because the, uh, the decimals recur, right? Um, a sixth doesn't go in neatly. By the way, it's 0 0.16. Six, six, and on forever, right? So thankfully, we don't need to write it in decimal, even though Excel will show it to us as a decimal. We're going to do a calculation. So if you've never done this before, you write an equals to start a calculation, and we want 1 divided by 6. So we do 1. There's no division symbol on your keyboard, so what do we use in its place? Yeah, the slash, right? So it's this one, not the one that starts uh, at the top and goes to the bottom. It's the other way around. And we want to divide by a 6. So bam, there we go. Now mine says 0.17. Yeah? I thought zero, 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 zero. Aha, OK. So if you got zero, <laughs> ah, Excel. So what it's trying to do there, it, did you write an equals at the front? <laughs> OK, fascinating. Uh, did everyone get a date? Or just some people? Who got, who got what I've got? Or like, uh, let me just make it a bit, you might have got something like that. Hands up? <coughs> OK, that's all right. Bless you. All right. If you didn't get that, who got a date? Hands up. Who got a date? <laughs> Hilarious. OK, that's all right. Thank you, computers. All right, this is easy to fix. If you ever, by the way, get a date and what you read needed was a number, right? Here's what you do. Um, you can just highlight this cell, or maybe you highlight the whole row, because this is going to happen to you again, right? And what you want to do is, if you go over to data, actually, we might be able to, I'm just thinking about the best way to do this for you guys, because I'm on a Mac, which I know is not that helpful. Um, we need to change the form of this into just a number, um, rather than a, a date. And normally, uh, I'm looking for where mine is on here. OK. Sorry, bear with me, guys, because <laughs> I anticipate a lot of different challenges that we'll have. But this was not one of the ones that I had because I tested it. And I was like, you shouldn't get a date on this. OK, here we go. All right, now up the top here, um, in your, they call it the ribbon. I think that's what Microsoft calls it, right? You should be able to find something that looks like it says general or it's got, it's, a, it's got a blank little spot in it. And you can see what I can do is I can change the format of that. Now, what you want is a number. It's defaulted to be a date because it thinks you mean like 
6th of January or 1st of June or something like that, right? Uh, if you can't find that, then you can just leave it for, as, as that for now. How it displays as a date, does it actually change the value that's there? So even if uh, you don't see it like we do, um, we can still work with the numbers. All right, now, it's pretty easy to work with this, right? Because I don't need to keep on typing this over and over again. I'm gonna copy that, and then I'm gonna paste it across all of the different values, like so. Is that all right? Um, you can see, by the way, Excel will always round off for you, and that's why even though I know that there are more decimal places there, and I can see that if I expand any one of the columns, that's why it's rounding off like so. Okay, I didn't need that. Now, in order to work out expected value, right, what we did was we added another row to the table. What was the row? It's actually written here. What am I gonna calculate? I am gonna, I've actually got P of X already, so what am I gonna do with P of X? I'm gonna multiply it by the value above. So for starters, let's just label what this row is going to be. I'll put X, P of X here, right? And then in order to get this multiplication happening, right? Again, I start in equals, and if once you, once you type equals, you can see my cursor, right? It's just highlighting different cells. There's my X, and again, just like division, there's no multiply button on your keyboard, so what do you use? an asterisk, so that's just above eight. And then I'm going to click again to get the P of X row, like so, okay? You could just type equals B1 times B2, and that would give you exactly the same result, but I'm lazy, that's why I click, okay? I hit enter, and I've got a value. Now, shock, horror, surprise, you get the same number. Why is that, by the way? Because you're multiplying by one, okay? But if I take this formula, I'm only gonna do one at a time this time, right? If I take that formula and copy it and then paste it across to the adjacent cell, now I've got a new value. Now what's really nice is if I, if I click into this, you'll see it, right? Because I've copied and pasted not a value but a formula and I've moved that formula, I've moved it from column B to column C. So it's just automatically said, oh, you wanna calculate in a new column. So the references, that's what we call the, the coordinates, C1, C2, they've just gone ahead and changed. And I can go ahead and I can do this not by pressing the space bar, I can do this and paste it all the way across. So far so good. Why is this last one one, by the way? Six it's six times the six, right? So you can see, by the way, that even though it's rounding to show you what the numbers are, this really is exactly a sixth, which is why there's no extra decimal places flying around. Happy so far? Okay, so I've got x, p, x for all of these values. How do I get from that to an expected value? I take the sum, right? Now, what's really nice about Excel is that if you, um, let's make this just a little bit bigger, like so. Um, if I press equals, again, I can just say sum, and it shows you there's a function called sum. So I'm going to open a bracket, and uh, blink and you'll miss it. Just watch, see I've got my cursor, it's, it's highlighted again, right? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click and I'm gonna hold for the cells that I want. So I'm gonna hold all the way across there, don't release your cursor, and then it gets that range for me, I let go, and now I can access the keyboard again, right? By the way, see how I've got in there a colon B3 to G3? Um, I could have written B3 plus C3 plus D3, etc. but again, lazy. So this is just a faster way to do it. Hit enter, we've got a value, okay? Three and a half, what did I just calculate? This is expected value, okay? So one of the things that's really helpful is that anytime you are doing calculations and you're like, I've just got one of those calculations, it's not immediately obvious what that is, it's very important that you actually do some kind of labeling, right? So expected value, uh, I'm, I can't easily access Greek letters on my keyboard, so I'll use this notation instead. And just to highlight that that's what I'm talking about, um, I'm gonna put, put that in a box like so. There we go. Maybe I'll make it even more obvious. There we go, all right. So, I've got my expected value, it's calculated. Happy times.